you're, you're out there talking to voters every day. What is your message to voters, especially Republican voters, as they go into this primary? You know, I think Ohio, uh, that's really our time in history. We're, we're moving forward. We're getting calls from companies that, uh, you know, are thinking about coming to Ohio all the time. The, the Intel, uh, getting Intel to come into Ohio, I think was a kind of a symbol to people that Ohio is really, really moving forward. So we're, we're excited about that. Uh, our, our biggest challenge, frankly, uh, is to make sure that every Ohioan lives up to their full potential. And since the first day when I took office, that's been our focus. It's education, education written very large, not just K through 12, uh, certainly that, but uh, early childhood development, uh, you know, we, we, we doubled that, uh, high quality uh, young women, women who are pregnant who maybe are having difficulty making sure that we have help help for them uh, all the way through uh, you know kids going to college where we've increased the scholarship uh, for kids to go to college and but it's also if they don't go to college you know how do we open up pathways with our career centers and our career centers are doing a doing a, I think a very very good job they're working much closer with business than they ever have before. And tech cred, uh, something the Lieutenant Governor has worked on. We've had over 40,000 people who've gotten their credentials, industry level credentials paid for by the state of Ohio so that they can get a better job or they can improve the job that they're currently having. So uh, that's really what our challenge is, making sure everybody can live up to their potential. We're creating more jobs, frankly, every day than, than we have workers. So focusing on the workers, Focusing on talent is really the key, and we want to continue, continue to do that. Uh, you know, you also see mental health problems, uh, addiction problems. Those slow people down. They t that takes them out of the playing field. That takes them so they can't, uh, you know, support their family many times. So uh, we've, we're putting emphasis on that. We're going to continue to to expand that at, at the local level so people have the have the help and support that they need. You mentioned jobs. Uh, some of your opponents in the primary have said and noted that the amount of jobs that were in Ohio when you first took office to now has declined by more than 100,000. What is the reason for that job loss and what can Ohio do to maybe either create new jobs or bring more people to Ohio to fill these jobs? Well, we're creating a lot of jobs. We're creating more jobs than, than we have people to fill them. And what we're seeing in Ohio is what we're seeing across the country as I talk to other governors. Uh, you know, we're seeing that the pandemic was very disruptive uh, and people's how they want to live, what they want to do has, has, has changed. And so you've got people who, you know, have not come back to work. They've made that an individual choice. Our unemployment in Ohio is lower than it was when, when the pandemic started. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to move, moving forward. Uh, I think that you know, this will work its way through. But it's a problem across, across the country. It's not, not unique to Ohio. When it comes to the pandemic, again, that's another thing that your opponents have mentioned. And you've, we've heard from a lot of people who maybe didn't like the way that this administration, how it handled the pandemic. What is your response to critics who say that maybe you went too far in the health orders, especially early on in the pandemic? We, we tried to follow the science. We tried to follow, um, you know, the best information that we could get, uh, and we made we made those decisions. Uh, we tried to balance livelihood, the ability of people to make their livelihood, make a living, uh, as well as keeping people alive. And I think we did a you know a good good job in regard to that. Um, just you know maybe a couple examples. Uh, it became clear that we needed to get kids back in school, and it was obvious that the urban schools were not going to go back. And so we just, at that point, had started to have the vaccine. I said to the urban schools, look, uh, I said to every school in the state, you know, if you're not in, we want you to go back in, and here's what we'll do. If you're willing to go back in by March 1st, we will vaccinate everybody in your school, every adult in the school who wants to be vaccinated. Every school took us up on that, except one. Uh, and when March 1 came, we had virtually every school back in. A couple of them we had to nudge a little bit, but we were able to get all the kids back in school. Um, that was, I think, an innovative way to, to deal with, with that problem. Something else that we did, 
that other states looked at and some states copied uh, is working with our local business community, uh, that business sector, to come up with the uh, protocols for when they would, how they would conduct their business and do it in a safe way. We did that with the restaurants, we did that with hairdressers, we did that uh, with manufacturers and, and others. And it really worked out well. Uh, I think for most employees, the safest time uh, of, the, of the day was eight hours when they were, they were working. So we've tried to balance those things. I think Ohio has come out uh, of this pandemic strong and we're, we're moving forward. What's it like to campaign two years after handling a pandemic? I mean, you would mention all the time during press conferences, this is a once in a hundred year pandemic. So now this is, you know, a very unique situation for you to be running and campaigning mm -hmm. after following a pandemic. And I'm guessing when you made those decisions, you didn't want politics to become involved. Now you have to go out and talk to voters about it. Well, I think, look, this is part of what we do. Uh, you know, when a governor runs for re-election, you talk about what you've done. You also talk about what you want to do in the future, what your vision is of, of the state. I think people expect that, and that's, that's what I've done. Uh, so, it, but it, it is certainly, you know, the pandemic is not something that we thought was coming. Uh, we had no idea that it was, it was coming at all. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I think has happened is that for the two years of the pandemic, that's been the news, uh, very understandably. That's what, what people have paid attention to. But we have stayed focused uh, on, on job training. We've stayed focused on bringing business to Ohio. I mean, think about the Intel deal. That was started back in May, went from May all the way to Christmas Day uh, when we were able to, to, to land them and bring them to Ohio. So all of, that, all of that work was going on when no one was paying any attention, I guess. And so now you know, we go back and we talk to people and explain what we've been doing in that area, what we've been doing in the area of, of having more support locally for mental health and frankly what our vision is of, for the future. When you talk to voters about landing the Intel mm -hmm. deal and then carrying on to a possible second term, how important is it to you to be in office to be able to kind of carry the project through to the finish line? Well, we have started a lot of things and I think we've made some real, real progress, but we have to, we have to carry on. Um, you know, I'll go back to what I told the legislature when I was sworn in. I said, look, I'm gonna be asking you to invest in things that are gonna take a long time uh, until we see the real results. And, and fortunately, the legislature has been willing to do that, whether it was investing in what we call H2 Ohio, uh, Lake Erie, making sure that uh, the algae bloom situation is dealt with. I told them, look, that's not gonna happen overnight. You know, it's gonna take a number of years, but if we do what we have to do, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna make a difference. So we're in the midst of, of, of moving this state forward. I wanna have the opportunity, and I hope to have that opportunity, and ask the voters for, give me the chance to finish, finish that job. When you're crafting, when you're talking to voters, and you know, a lot of the talk out there right now is, well, there are Trump Republicans and there are traditional Republicans. What are you seeing when it comes to what Republican voters want out of a gubernatorial candidate? Well, I, th I think people want a conservative administration. And, you know, this has been a very conservative administration. If you look at it from a fiscal point of view, we, in spite of the pandemic, we have balanced the budget. Uh, we have not had to tap into the rainy day fund at all. Uh, we now have the highest bond rating that we've had since 1979. And by all indications, uh, fiscally we're doing very, very well, and we've been able to cut taxes, uh, income taxes, by $2.2 .2 billion uh, along with all that. So fiscally, this has been a very conservative administration. This, on the social issues, uh, on abortion, for example, there's, look, there's no one more pro-life than, than Mike DeWine. We've signed the heartbeat bill. We've signed a number of other pro-life bills. Uh, we've been able to get more money to pregnancy centers around the state of Ohio uh, than we've ever seen before. So very, very pro-life administration. Um, we also, as far as the Second Amendment, we've signed every, every uh, pro-Second Amendment bill that's been presented to us. So this has been, from a social 
conservative and a fiscal conservative point of view, a very, very conservative administration. On the topic of social issues, the legislature, Republicans mm -hmm. in the legislature, have introduced bills to ban so-called critical race theory or diversity, inclusion, equity topics. There's a recent bill that would ban teachers from talking about sexual orientation, and gender identity. Whether these bills make it to the legislature or not, these are things that are being discussed in Ohio. What kind of impact do you think that has on people who want to decide to stay in Ohio or come to Ohio? Where do these social issues, how do these social issues impact Ohio when it comes to trying to attract people and retain people? Well, first of all, I'm not in favor of critical race theory being taught. Uh, I think most Ohioans, maybe all Ohioans can agree that we don't want our first graders being taught about sex education. I mean, so there's, there's certainly some areas where there, there's common ground. I've outlined what I think uh, should be, what should happen in schools, what schools should do. Um, as I've talked about before, I thought I was going to be a social studies teacher and, uh, and in high school. So, you know, rigorous debate in class is good, uh, you know, holding kids so accountable so that they not only have ideas or opinions, but they have some facts to back it up is probably a, a good thing. You want to teach critical thinking, not critical race theory, but critical thinking is certainly something that we expect our kids to be taught and how to marshal their arguments and, and, uh, and looking at history, looking at the original documents, looking at the Constitution, looking at the Bill of Rights, looking at the, at the Declaration of Independence, the Federalist Papers. I mean, all of that I think we should be able to agree on, that these, these are important important things to do. But when it comes to a possible backlash to some of these bills that have been introduced, do you think that maybe that backlash is over embellished? Do you think people really care about these social issues or do you think it's maybe like the, the, the loud minority that's caring much about this and that more people care about other issues other than these social well, issues? Well, I think certainly some people do care about it. I mean, I think one of the things that um, we should be able to agree on is that parents, uh, you know, need to be involved in schools. I mean, we want, you know, we want our parents to be more involved in schools and being involved in schools means being able to uh, express to the, the school board, say, hey, look, we don't, you know, we don't think you should be talking about this or you should not be involved uh, in, in, you know, to take the ex extreme example of sex education for a kindergarten child. I mean, you know, if that's going on in school, we would expect parents to, uh, not like that and I think we can say from the state we don't we don't approve of that we don't like that you have uh, challengers Joe Blystone Jim Renacy both putting themselves as outsiders of course Jim Renacy did serve in Congress but they say that Ohio needs an outsider to be governor and of course you've served in public office for a long time why is why why should voters not want an outsider why is it important to have somebody who's been in public service for a long time well, I'm not sure whether that's the, the issue. I think the issue is, um, you know, how well, what do people think about the job that I've done? Uh, you know, from looking at it from the holistic point of view. Um, I think when the pandemic hit, it was uh, helpful that I'd been in public office for a while because I'd learned some things. And frankly, you learn from your mistakes and the mistakes that I'd made in the past uh, and we all make mistakes, I certainly made them. Uh, but when I analyzed them and thought about those, they, that really came from me not getting enough information and drilling down and getting the facts. And so when the pandemic hit, you know, uh, we've, we, I've tried to do that. I've tried to get as much information as I can before I make a decision. I do that every day. I do that every day, whatever the issue is, I try to pull in information and, and find out, uh, you, you know, what, Look at what other states are doing, for example. We have 50 states, it's great. 50 laboratories of democracy, as they, they say. We've had the opportunity, to, you, you look and see what works and what doesn't work. So I think that experience of, of seeing what works, what does not work is, is very helpful uh, in my role as governor.